So Iris, as it states, it's a immediate mode GUI library, which is a user interface library that doesn't require you to design and make GUIs because you can generate everything dynamically through scripting. And I'm gonna show you how to use it in this video. So this is the Iris the forum post. It basically goes over what Iris is and its functionality. But yeah, this is its demo that I'm gonna show later on. But overall, I need to say that it's a pretty cool tool and it's worth seeing what it's about. So let's start off with Iris itself, it's basically just a module, right? And it has these widgets that you can create. So let's get to it then. We need to require the module in a place from which the local player has access to. So like starter player scripts, right? So that's how you require it and you have to also initialize it with the init right here. And that's going to just start the module. And now to actually build the whole interface and everything, we have to do Iris and connect and a function. And now we can do iris.window and the name is provided in the arguments and the arguments is a widget arguments which is a table where the first argument is a name so you can just name this one window and I'm gonna go to the documentation Iris documentation right if you go to the API and scroll down to the end right here you can see that this end function marks the end of any widget which has children for example the tree widget right but if you go to the window widget you can see the tag that it has the children right here so to mark the end we have to use I Iris dot end. And Roblox Studio formatting is a bit weird, so I'm just gonna have to write everything in this line. Roblox doesn't recognize that it's a custom library, but anyways. So this is the window, right? And if I playtest it, you can see that it created a window which is named window right here. But now how do I add stuff to this window? Well, it's pretty easy. So let's say we wanted to add a button, for example, right? We need to do iris that button and then provide the arguments again so name it button one and if i go to the basics and button you can see that it has different events right and it doesn't have a state state is gonna be something i'm gonna talk about later because it's used in different stuff like a checkbox for example and yeah so we have this button right here now right but now nothing happens whenever i press on it and that's because we need to connect said events and how do we do it well we need to connect the button to a variable so we need to do button one is equal to iris that button and we need to connect an event to it and it's a bit different than connecting an instance to a call like you would do in roblox for this button to have the clicked event let's say we need to do if button one that clicked then we can print out that this button was clicked and now it's printing out that this button was clicked so it's just like this, it's pretty simple, right? We can also add a text label, which is iris, that text, and then arguments, which is just a text label. And formatting stuff like this is gonna cause everything to appear one below another, right? Because it was the button and then the text. And to put everything in the same line, we have to do iris, that same line. And this also contains children, so we have to do iris that end. And if you put everything into this same line, it's going to appear next to each other, as you can see right here. And that's what I mean about it being a bit weird when I said that it's not gonna format right. Because normally the text would look something like this, so it would be more readable, right? I mean, the code, not the text. But whenever I'm gonna try to do a change in this code, you can see that it goes back, right? It doesn't matter where really. It's just not going to format right, so yeah. Doing iris in something like Visual Studio Code is way better and way cleaner, but yeah. Let's just go back. Let's create a checkbox now. So you can do local checkbox is equal to iris that checkbox and here you can see that there are the arguments and the states and these states are optional so you can name this one box one and now for the state arguments we have to do a variable name this one box state and do iris that state and there is the initial value which is an any but this state basically matters for the variable and whatever you register it to so you can give it a state of one oh no this is a checkbox so i'm actually gonna give it a state of false instead so you can give it a state which is is checked is equal to box state but now there is the question of how do i get the box state well we can do iris that text we can give the arguments of is box checked and actually just format it so it's easier in this and then add another table followed by backslash n then in this table we need to add the checkbox that state that is checked and then value so what it's going to do is going to show us if the box is checked 
just like so. So is the box checked? No. But if I press on it, it's changing to true. As you can see, it's updating dynamically. So it's pretty cool, right? But you can also share a state between few different elements. Let's say when you wanted to select only one item from a list and you do so by doing a shared state, which is just iris.state and we can give it a number of one. And now we can add a tree widget, which is iris.tree and give it a name of just tree. Right, and the tree also needs an iris end. And this is a tree like you would have a tree hierarchy like this one, right? You can add children, expand it and do any type of stuff you can. So let's do it then. We can do iris text and name this one element one and then add selectable elements by doing iris that selectable and then add a selectable one. And these selectables, right, in the arguments we have to provide their own individual IDs. And if I go to combo and see the selectable, right, in the arguments it has the text, which is the text of the selectable element, and index, which is the index of selectable value. And if you gave this element an index of 1, and let's say another element an index of 1, you would select these two elements at the same time, right, but we don't want that. We want to only select one, right, so these are the arguments, and now we need this states so into add an index state which is equal to shared state right and we can add three of them but we need to remember to change their indexes so we have this tree right here which is just tree right it has element one and selectables which i forgot to change the name of so, but anyway as you can see it has the elements right there and you can only select one at a time so yeah that's the selectable elements and a tree so i'm gonna add one more thing which is a menu and then i'm gonna start showing more different stuff within a demo version which is also available for download, but yeah, anyway. So the last thing I want to show is the iris.menu, which also needs iris.n. And in the arguments, you can add just menu something, right? And then you can add a format widget, which is iris.separator. It's just gonna create a line. And above that, we can add an iris.text, which is gonna say menu, menu dropdown. Oh, let's not forget about the brackets, right? And then we can add different options to the menu, like iris.menu item. And menu items have to be within the menu. And this menu item is a button, so you can add button one. And then we can add something like iris.toggle, which is menu toggle. And the arguments are going to be thing one and thing two. So toggle is a button which you can toggle on and off. It's going to have a check mark next to it and to check if it was selected right we can assign the toggle one to another variable and do if toggle one that checked different elements have different events right the button had the clicked one but toggle has checked and the checkbox also has checked i believe we can just print out toggle one was checked and then just hit play so we have this menu something that we can click on and as you can see there is the menu drop down the separator and button one then thing one which printed out that thing was was checked if i press on it again you can see that it's not printing out but yeah it has a check next to it right there so yeah that's basically basics of iris it's really nice if you don't want to design the whole GUI for your game and just to have like this small panel right here that I can do stuff with and yeah it's a really powerful and customizable tool and if you want you can also add different widgets to it like your own ones but yeah also don't mind my voice but I don't know how but I got sick again and yeah I'm still gonna try to record a tutorial for you guys but anyway so this is the demo showcase All right you have a lot of different buttons right here like let's say this recursive window that's gonna just pop out if you press on the recursive again All right and a lot of different showcases like window options if i select no background it's gonna have no background right no move means i'm not gonna be able to move it right no resize is gonna get rid of this thing right here in the corner no collapse means i can't hide it and yeah i'm gonna leave most of this stuff so you can experiment with it then there is the event interactivity right so there is clicked right click double click and control click and you can just see that the whole gui is like i said dynamic click to show text for 20 frames and it says here i am right there is the event tracker something you can do on hover and it just has a lot of different functions oh this is the is check that i was also doing and you can also check check boxes with buttons right you can also change the color of a text but mostly what you want to do is go into the widgets and just look through different stuff like the basics right this is the button the small button and yeah it can be a bit overwhelming but don't worry it's self-explanatory and most of the stuff is just pretty intuitive you can also customize everything with code too and yeah 
There are also vectors, you deems, color freeze, and a whole bunch of different stuff. Also, a really cool thing about this are sliders that you don't have to design. They are just there, and they provide a given value. Like, this one goes from minus 2 to 1. And if you ever designed a user interface slider like this, you know it's not... You know it's kind of a pain, and yeah. Just having a tool that allows you to do that is pretty great. But yeah, like I said, I'm gonna leave the rest for you to explore and just see for yourself, because Iris is a really good tool. Like I said, if you don't design the whole user interface yourself, this just gives you an ability to make a ready, go, simple console for whatever. And I've seen that a lot of people were arguing on the dev forum post that you shouldn't learn it, it's not really worth it. And in my opinion, it's just dependent on you and your workflow. And if you want to use it, then use it. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's not worth it. Like Iris is a powerful tool that can do a lot of stuff. And sometimes it's easier to just learn this library than go through the whole process of learning how to make GUIs yourself, but it's mostly dependent on a person. So if it's just your workflow, then go ahead and use it. But that's going to be everything for today, so yeah. Hope you found it informative and see ya guys.